the Osmonds on the show. We actually have the Osmonds. How about that? Hello, everybody. Hello. Hello, guys. How are you doing? Very, very well. Yeah, very well. All right. So what was in the water when you two were born that you can both write books so well? Uh, let's talk to the man uh, who is the author of The Ghost Theatre, which is the main subject of this interview. Matt, first of all. Mm. I've no idea. I mean... My mum was a teacher, so there were always kind of like books in the, the house. And I think yeah. there was that kind of thing that... It was they, mainly Jackie Collins, though. Yeah, but that, I mean... That's <laughs> yeah, great, great writer. That's yeah, great yeah. Good stuff. Good page turners. Yeah, kind of I like agree. storytelling, you know, yeah. and Harold Robbins and stuff and all those kind of things. But I think it's, it's just taking books seriously, isn't it? That's the thing, that, that it's a, an important thing to do. Yeah, but this. if you take them too seriously, you know, as a kid, you disengage with them. So there's a fine line, isn't there? Yeah, but I always love things like kind of like Sherlock Holmes yeah. and stuff like that, quite adventurous story yeah. kind of things all it? right um now obviously rich you've done all right in the book writing world thus far you know jury's still out but it's looking good isn't it um <laughs> <It's promised. laughs> what about this of your brother's oh book oh my goodness it couldn't be more different from yours it is so brilliant well it couldn't be more different but i tell you the way in which it's similar is you just cannot stop turning the pages it's so brilliant it's it's the, the writing is extraordinary it's so lyrical it's about shakespearean london uh but in you know there's there's all sorts of chase sequences all sorts of stuff going on the writing is so beautiful but you have to keep turning the pages i just i, I think it's a, a work of absolute genuine genius all right i some, I, I do realize it is an interview at some point we have to ask matt a question but we could just lord over him and drool over I'm, him a bit I'm longer f- i'm fine with this okay <laughs> well just want to i'm happy me for a little on. bit, you he's know. Got, he's got a cup of tea. Yeah, <laughs> leave this to Rich and I. I mean, I did say, you know, I, I'm not the biggest non-fiction fan in the world. I'm really not. But I do adore uh, Charles Dickens and I do adore Oscar Wilde. So it's a different, it's a certain flavour. And I said earlier on the show, and I really mean it, Rich, it's like it's like Charles Dickens suddenly came back from the dead and wrote another book. That's what it yeah. feels like to me. What do you think? Isn't it? I think exactly that. All the way through, you're taken into a world. You feel like you are in Elizabethan London. You've got these incredible characters. You've got these incredible um, ideas. And, you know, there's like a whole new religion that's been invented and there's you know people running across the rooftops in this extraordinary theater troupe of people and you're immersed completely in this world and in these characters so you're and the, the way he describes the sights and the sounds and the smells of a of a place it's just i just think it's completely it transports you yeah and we haven't even said what the book's about yet uh, <laughs> the, the opening like 20 pages like the, the like a pre titled james bond scene yeah i thought it was mission impossible in elizabethan london it was... i'm so stealing that yeah. that's absolutely great <laughs> well you don't we need get, to steal if we, see, if we could get it on the... the back of the cover that'd have be you great. seen what people are saying about the book all the reviews are in like they're off the chain i know it's your second novel it's not your first but every when i read a dickens novel or an oscar Wilde novel you know you you look at a paragraph you know this rich you, you mm. read a paragraph and you have to stop i have to stop because of the wonder of the paragraph yeah. and it's got the description in but it has movement in because it's not florid it's fluid it's different isn't yes, it exactly. and that's what this book's like yeah. i don't get it i don't get how you've done it i don't i don't even know if you wrote it i don't know if you uh, <laughs> you bought an old dickens novel that was unpublished I can, yeah that's, I, I can, that's where exactly does it come I just from? changed the you, names. First, frame the book frame the frame the story please it's about two child actors in elizabethan london which was a big thing the most famous people in elizabethan london who who weren't kind of royal were actors everyone went to the theatre it was the huge thing and the poshest and most interesting theatres had child actors from about eight to about 14. And they put on these incredible, quite sexual, quite political plays, and everyone went to see them. And I was fascinated by these these kids who were incredibly famous, but but basically slaves. Yeah. You know, they were bought and sold. Um, and some posh kids. Oh, yeah. Well, the thing is, to do the plays, um, you had to be pretty. Yeah. Um, if you knew some Latin, that helped. Yeah, or could you read, obviously. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And they had to learn, like, 20 plays a year. So, so they were stealing posh kids off the street. They actually had a... You can still see it in uh, the records office in Kew. A little sign for them from Queen Elizabeth to, allowing this guy, Henry Evans, to take kids off the street, to press gang them. They were that important. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's the story of... Two, of, of Two child actors who fall in love and create this kind of punk theatre troupe that ferments rebellion 
in the streets of London. And the theatre the theater troops and the theatre companies themselves were punk anyway because they sort of had to be. So, for example, you know, there's one point in the, the first few chapters of the book where a new play is delivered in the morning and it has to be performed in the evening. Oh, yeah, that's completely true. That, yeah. that, that kind of thing happened, that they were expected to know all of this stuff. And it was quite rough and ready and people would get up on stage and there was singing and dancing and all kinds of things. It was quite, it was quite raucous, you know, working-class entertainment at the time. So Nonsuch yeah. is um, one of the two, and Shay is the girl, yes. slash dressed as a boy, because yep. that happened a lot as well, didn't it? Yeah. Um, and so Nonsuch, is, you don't know who Nonsuch is, first of all, uh, but he obviously is extremely charismatic. It turns out that he's the superstar of this particular yeah. theatre, um, not the ghost theatre yet. And Shay is educated to a point by her dad, who's now a boatman on the Thames. He's blind and the mum's no longer there and all this kind of stuff goes on. And so she finds herself in the pit because she wants to watch Nonsuch perform because she, she didn't realise till a minute before the performance that he's a player. And then uh, there's no seats left, so she She's given a tuppence a day job as the um, prompter, as the, prompt, yeah. as the prompter, and so she's got this amazing POV of, of something she's never seen before, um, and so this is her witnessing Nonsuch in the second act, and this is the brilliant Matt Osman's writing. There was a weight to his words. This is Nonsuch that she'd not noticed earlier. His voice was a blade returning to a sheath, a pigeon coming home to roost, and his power was double trebled even by Alouette's lighting. Her lanterns were mirrored and directional, throwing beams of light that always caught Nonsuch's face. She could dim and brighten, flattening his features and throwing him into the shadows. She played with the light the way Nonsuch played with words, and the two of them warped the very air to their bidding. I mean, come on. And every paragraph's <laughs> yeah. like that, isn't I it? Wish, I wish I hadn't read it now, because I'd like to read it. <laughs> How great you know I mean. is this book, Rich? Yeah, I think it's terrific. Well, do you know what? Honestly, the thing that matters more to me, and it's brilliant, Matt's always been brilliant, everything he's ever done. Um, but I love the fact that it's incredibly entertaining as well. You know, some writers who have these descriptive powers... They just get lost can, in it. They get lost in it, and Matt, has, Matt never never loses sight of the story at any point. It's amazing. Look, you, look, you sitting there reading. That's good radio. <laughs> yeah. I, don't, I, don't, I don't, actually don't care. I don't care. I think it is good radio. Yeah, I, listen, I agree. Um, Right, so uh, how do you? So you're in the. So we're in the middle. So she gets one night. First night we meet her dad, and she's in her dad's boat. And uh, there are three these three rapscallions who've been out gaming. And if they get in the boat, terrible things might happen. So they ward them off, and she gets in the boat with her dad, and they go d uh, down river. Yes, down river to 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 Birdland. What yeah. the heck is Birdland? What is this um, um, sect called? What is this area of London called? What is this sort of um, Dickensian, pre-Dickensian, Shakespearean Las Vegas sphere called? And what happens there? <laughs> it's a thing called Birdland, and uh, the main character Shay is an Avis Colton, who is a bird worshipper, um, and they live in these huge nets outside of London. Right where they bring down birds and they feed them because, because they worship them. Yeah. Which just came from a conversation I was having with someone, which was, why, do, why has there never been a bird-worshipping religion? Yeah. It seems, if you're going to... I'm not a religious person. And if I was going to worship something, it wouldn't be a guy in the sky with a beard. Birds seem... It would be a buzzer eagle. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, you know, perhaps yeah, yeah, yeah. an eagle. Perhaps you know, an eagle. There's something about birds, you know, I mean, they're unknowable and they're beautiful and they live in the heavens. Um, so I wanted to make up I wanted to make up a religion, you know. It's an, it's an ego thing. Yeah, so, so come more, more, because it's, 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 it's better than how you're describing it. Come on, it, you're the man, you're the man here. You're almost like you're embarrassed about your own genius. There's a world, there, there is this worshipping of the birds yeah. to the extent that the first time we meet Shay, she's, she's freeing birds. Yes. She's going through, around through London, shop, and this is yeah. why she's being chased in the opening scene, as it were. Yeah. Tell us about that. Um, yeah, I, I'm, I write a lot about, she, she, she trains a hawk, and I've always been fascinated in it. And the kind of connection between between people and animals, you know, there's bears and stuff in, the, yeah. in this as well. Um, but I wanted to I, I wanted to write about magic and the things that f feel like magic to me, and yeah. those things are um, the theatre and music and performance and worship. All these kind of things that 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 sit outside our normal everyday experience, um, and. Yeah, we, Birdland, it was just kind of, 
I, I don't know, a mental experiment. If you worship birds, what would it look, what would it look like? Who would your gods be? And she, How, she, what would you sing not, about? She's not the conductor of the murmuration that can happen and people can go and see it. But you can get why a murmuration uh, of starlings or, or whatever could become sort of the widescreen entertainment of its day if yes, you knew it was going to yes. happen. If you could sell tickets for it, you would, wouldn't you? Yeah, totally. So, and they're beautiful. You know, I've been to see them. Kind of Brighton, actually, is yeah, really good for murmuration. Yeah. Yeah. Weather is so times. beautiful. So yeah, it's beautiful. so funny, isn't it? Because, like, people are Pay like millions of pounds for a, a framed picture that doesn't move at auction. Yeah. yeah every night, especially this time of yeah. the year, you got the sunset and you got the sunrise every morning. And we don't look, we just don't bother. Why are we not why are we not astounded by I say, don't know, Vassus. Every time I see a hedgehog, I just have to <laughs> just pause for a minute and go, How amazing is the hedgehog? Do you I, know what I mean? What I, is wrong with us? I had a friend from Spain who saw a picture of a badger. Yeah, and she was like, "What the hell is that?" <laughs> and I was like, "It's a badger. You you get them in in the hedgerows here." And yeah. she was like, "Why are you not out looking for them all it's the time? What is this thing?" Yeah. Yeah. Badgers. Why, by the way, you know when you're hectoring someone, mm -hmm. why do why can you also badger them? Why do badgers get the rap when you're giving somebody a hard time? That's a good point. Because badger, badgers never give anybody a hard time, do they? Well, they they're Other badgers. Seen. Other badgers. I thought they aren't they quite communal. They are, but yeah, but you know, there's beef. There's badger beef. <laughs> sure. <laughs> I mean, come on, that's my new. That's my new Netflix show. Uh, badger beef. Badger. <laughs> I like that you're setting yourself up as a badger expert. Yeah, I've well, never listen. heard you talk about badgers before in your life. And so, yeah, yeah, of course, very communal. I yeah. Would be shocked if no two badgers have ever had some sort of row. Yeah. That's all I'm saying. I'm sure. Okay. I'm sure they're very peaceable creatures. So do you think badgers Hector then? Yeah. And, and, and Hector's, Hector's badger. badger. Yeah. Hector's house. That was a show and a half. Um, all right. I don't. I. I have. I've only. I've read a hundred pages. Right. Okay. It goes um, downhill from there. I bet it. I bet it doesn't. But it's. It, this book is stunning. How, what else can we say, Rich, to get people to buy this book? Um, I will just say this, which is, it's if you're starting a train journey, if you're starting a plane journey, anything like that, if you've got a couple of hours to, to spare, if you read the first page, by all means, put it down if you don't like it but you will read the second page, then you read the third. It's just yeah. one of those books that absolutely captivates you and takes you into a, a brand new world. And I love writing about the world as it is now. That's the thing I feel that I have in my power to talk about the world around us. I, I cannot imagine the feats of creative imagination that go into inventing an entirely new world that's real but feels fantastical. But then you can make stuff up. That's the great thing. I make stuff no, up no, anyway. No, no, you can make yeah, stuff yeah, yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. It's different, mate. <laughs> yeah, exactly. By the way, how come this is only your second book and you've been in this you're in a band as well aren't you yeah, <laughs> yeah. you see the band called Swain yeah. apparently so you've been doing that for ages and you've always have you always had been hiding this under a bush or somewhere did no you, I did don't, you know you could do this stuff? I, I don't know why I didn't do it earlier because I spent <laughs> so much of my, of my life in hotel rooms and on yeah. planes and in, and in buses and stuff yeah and ne nowadays all I do is write that's what I do you know I, I sit on planes I sit in hotel well, don't rooms tell the rest of the band that because you're going on tour soon aren't you yeah, yeah, but the, the, I write when we're, when we're oh, talking. Okay. I don't think, think it's a secret. Because there's nothing, it, it's that Keith, Keith Richards thing, you know, like five years working, 20 years hanging around. Yeah, hurry um, up and wait. I, I, I wish I'd started 20 years ago, you know. Well, yeah. maybe it just wasn't right. Maybe the time wasn't right. Um, I can't remember the first, did you come on and talk about the first book? You came on the show to talk about something. No, I came on with Brett talking about the, um, I think, the Manix gigs that right. we're doing in the Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you always double... Why are you here, Rich, just out of interest? I, I, do you know what? I have no idea, but I'm delighted to be here. Ma <laughs> mainly <laughs> mainly as a cheerleader for a book that I absolutely adore, and which, which I hope everyone will go and buy. Because I was saying, I'm not being funny, but uh, by the way, it's always nice to see you. You oh, know that, and I know you like here. to catch up and follow them and all yeah. this kind of stuff. But I was just thinking, are you just coming in to say how great this book is? And I think yeah. you are, aren't you? Of course I am. Yeah, 100% I am. <laughs> this is a brilliant idea. I'm going to just bring you with, you with me all the time, just in the background. Yeah, a couple of times we've done like live events, the two of us, um, talking about books. And it's such a joy because we're such different writers, such, you know, but we come from the same place. Yeah. And we both write and that's, you know, we both find that very difficult. We both started writing at the same time. But, you know, people who come to see it, there's everyone likes one of us. That's isn't it the, interesting? Uh, that's the isn't it interesting? It. Right. So let's let's go to the. I don't know which the side hustle, is, side hustle is now. To be honest, your side hustle used to be writing, and it's not anymore. And your yes, side hustle is everything else. Job. But if you think about your um, lane where you came from, yes, if you forgive that expression, yes. Um, so you come from the 
world of TV formats, which is very yeah. mechanical and very methodical and very yeah. mathematical, isn't it? Yeah. And you come from the world of music, which can be mathematical, of course, as well, to do with fretboards and keys and this kind of other stuff and staves and semitones and tones and all that kind of wonderful thing. But it's more ethereal. And your book is more musical and your books are more game... Not game show, but no, more I agree. formatted. Yeah, cliffhangers, what's going to happen that's next. That's where we are, isn't yeah, it? Exactly, yeah, exactly that. And, you know, and that's not because I worked in television, it's not because Matt worked in music, but I went into television because that's how my brain works, that boom, 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 entertain, 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 keep people reading. Matt went into music because that's how his mind works, which is passion and expressing yourself and trying to bring beauty out of chaos. And that's how, that's how, that's how the books read, I think. Yeah, there is a lot of cosmos in this chaos. In fact, it's all cosmos with, you know, because you can only really be spot. I think you can only be genuinely spot. And I got this wrong for years, clearly. I think you can only be genuinely spontaneous if you actually have a massive foundation of stability. Because yeah. if, if you don't, it's not spontaneity. It is actually just chaos. Yeah, you've, mm-hmm. you've always got to have somewhere to go back to. You've always got to have a little cave to go back to. You never need to go back there. Or a big cave. It's like, you know, a boat is safe in port, but boats are not made to be in port. There's a brilliant, brilliant quote from David Bowie who said when he's making a record, he likes to be um, far in the water, far enough away from the land that his feet aren't touching the bottom, but you can still see the shore. Yeah. <laughs> and that's exactly it. You want to be a little bit out of your depth, yeah, yeah. but not kind of drowning. I'm like that. I always think I'm happy to be out of my comfort zone, but I still want to be able to attach to my comfort zone's Wi-Fi. That's where, <laughs> yeah. that's where I like to be. Well, it's, that, it's the difference between being um, within your grasp and beyond your reach. Yeah, yeah. You just want yeah, to be slightly right. beyond your reach, don't you? Yeah. That's the thing. Oh, my goodness. Well, I mean, we could talk more about it. We don't need to. Just buy the Ghost Theatre, Matt Osman, and uh, tell me... Tell me it's not great so it's it's out as a paperback straight off the bat no 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 it's it's been out in hardback oh, for, for kind of months yeah. oh, i didn't know that um, sorry it's out in paperback um tomorrow all right well it's it's great all right what's going on music uh, you are on tour soon big gigs we're doing we're doing a whole lot of shows with the manic street preachers yeah which is what you came in to talk about which before. which are going to be great yeah. you know kind of like cardiff castle the eden project yeah, yeah. Alexander. they're all sold out aren't they i presume uh, one's left the margate dreamland one <laughs> Come on, Come on, Kent. Margate. Yeah. What's that, wrong with Margate? Yeah. Exactly. It, we did add it late. And yeah. we just... We, we, it's back on the map, Margate now, isn't it? Tracy Emmons yes. down there and all that stuff. And we're, we're, doing a, we're doing a big show August the 1st, Audley End in Essex, with Johnny Marr supporting. Yeah, I've at, seen that. that came and Nadine today, Shah, so... All right, great. Uh, and Rich, you're doing something different soon, aren't you? Um, well, I've got the new book coming out, which is not a Thursday Murder Club book. That'll be out in September. Um, but then I'll be back to Thursday Murder Club after that. But we've got the Thursday Murder Club film shooting this summer. No, you, you, um, something else is going on. Something yeah. else is going on. I'm doing a game, a gameplay thing. A gameplay thing. Hmm. We're doing a second. podcast. Oh, Badger Beef. <laughs> <laughs> no, That's Badger Beef. No, Six Jay, series. What's the thing that we were discussing, Richard's, that Richard's having a load of fun doing? Podcast? Yeah. There's something that he's forgotten about that we know about. <laughs> New book spin up for next is yeah, blah blah blah, 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 blah yakety yeah, yak, yeah, yak, yak, yak. Aren't you do- I thought you were doing this like sort of community collective thing where you can I wonder who you're thinking of. No, no, no. it's definitely no it's definitely. But you should do it. I mean it sounds Isn't interesting. Are you bringing yeah. the murder club to life or something? Am I bringing the murder club to life? <laughs> like the Are you murder accusing him of being a murderer, basically? Is that I, what you're I saying? You like Are you a... accusing me of teaming up with a series of pensioners and solving crimes? <laughs> I thought you were doing a, like a mass gameplay Thursday murder club. Club. This might be a fever dream. It sounds, it's, it sounds like a, it's interesting. I wonder if it's his yeah. world of fiction. It's interesting because I wonder who now owns no this research. idea. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> who, Chris, who owns Chris, this idea? You should Chris, do it, yeah. basically. I haven't got time. Stop. Every time you should do this, you should do that. I don't have time to, I don't have time to do anything anymore because I'm just doing everything I should be doing properly. And if you do everything you should do properly, then you haven't got time for anything that you exactly shouldn't be doing. Exactly that. Mm. You've got to give everything else up. That's the point. Yeah, you've got to find nice, the things that you love and let everything else fall you don't by the wayside. Yeah, you don't give stuff up. It just falls, yes, falls exactly to the that. side. Exactly. It's great. No need for pointy elbows. It's great to see you, man. I'm so chuffed that I know you a bit. Oh, <laughs> thank you. That's very, very kind. And it's always great to see Rich. Yeah, um, it's I'm, great. I'm chuffed I know him a bit as well. It's great <laughs> to see you come. It's like, do you remember on Opportunity Knox where they used to have the nominee first? Yes. Not yeah, the yeah. nominated. Yes, yeah, The sponsor. Yeah. Yes. And Hugh Green would welcome the sponsor to the sofa. Exactly. And then you, and by the way, you wouldn't know this person either. This person would be a member of the public. So it's like a double intro, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, and so that's, that's what we've done today. That's what you're doing. <laughs> yeah. And listen, I'm aware I am slightly biased, but I, I would not be letting anyone down. If you buy that book, you, you will get your money's worth. 
I just oh, uh, R- Richard will pay you back if you don't like it. Oh yeah, yeah, no, no, yeah. yeah. Let's yeah. do that. Up to, up to a point. Up to up to three people. Yeah, yeah. The well is deep but not infinite. Um, from a sibling's point of view, from we got a parent. Um, Kate Silverton's on tomorrow talking about parenting. Mm. Um, clearly, your mum didn't do the worst job in the world. Yeah, you're both doing pretty well. You both give us give us to the world and not take us. You have a purpose. You have a service. You you leave every situation or most situations better. Um, because you are in them but also you get extraordinarily well as brothers mm. can you give the rest of us mums and dads any handy hints as to how that may have happened well i think all all my mum really do, did was leave us alone is the truth you know kids these days and they're, <laughs> they're sort tried of that mm, some work. They're, they're, they're kind of oh you got to do piano lessons or french lessons or you got to, and you know she just you know she worked out that matt liked music she worked out that i liked watching telly and writing stuff and she just let us do it i think and she loved us and she never pushed us wow. she never told us to go to university well she she loved matt more than she loves me because he's the oldest right. um but yeah I th- she she was very very um hands off apart from uh, where love is concerned you say that but hands-on. maybe there's a bit of jedi stuff going on Oh, a hundred percent. So, what was the? This is the Jedi stuff we need to well, know. Well, no, my mum thinks she's a genius. So she's like, she, she did the thing of, of course, you don't need to go to university. Of course, you mustn't do. And we think, oh my god, you'd lose your mind if we didn't go to university. <laughs> we'll be the first generation in this family ever to go to university, <laughs> and you would absolutely it would kill you if we didn't. But she'd always go, oh no, 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 you mustn't worry. You can just why don't you go out and get a job? Why don't you go and work in Iceland? You think I know what you're up to, old woman. <laughs> I know what's going on here. But by and large, I think she just liked us and was you, interested in us. You, 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 Exactly how well you do working in Iceland, basically. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and how, do you concur with everything Richard just said? Yeah, totally. I, I think the thing is that your kids are, are never, never going to do what you want them to do. Right. You know what I mean? So it's pointless kind of forcing them into something. And Ricky's totally right. She just let us be, and we found our own passions. You know what I mean? We found the things that, right. that, that, that we wanted. Um, and I think she was bemused by most of it. Yeah, for sure. You know what I mean? I, I think, think it was really fantastic when Ricky wrote a book yeah. because she could talk to her friends about that. Right. She couldn't really play them suede. Yeah. You know what I mean? They're, or or they're, pointless. They're, yeah. When, when we did TV and music, she was proud, but yeah, she was, yeah, she was, yeah, she was yeah. like, kind of, yeah. When, as soon as we're authors. She couldn't own it, though. She's yeah. like, oh, my boys. <laughs> oh, didn't they do a good job? <laughs> I mean, she, she immediately took over the book club, didn't she? Yeah. Yeah. There was a kind of a putch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. funny, man. Uh, great, Steve. Thank you so much. Anything else you'd like to say before we finish chatting? No, come and, get, come and see Suede over the summer. The yeah. shows are going to be amazing. Absolutely. Buy the book. Can, yeah, can I recommend a book? Yeah. Ghost Theatre, Matt Osman. Hey! <laughs> All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Great to see you both. Good fun, this one. Thanks, Chris. Great fun. All right. Virgin Radio.